that God has a special blessing for you today. You say, I don't know that. I do. I believe God has a special blessing for you for this day. I believe it even has your name on it. And if we'll seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, these things will be added to us. You may be in an awful crunch. You are being squeezed to the wall. You don't know how you're going to make it. You may be losing your house, your car, everything. You may have lost your job. Who knows the squeeze in this time that people are in. I hear it over and over and over. And not only in the States, because I go all around the world. I hear it all around the world. It's a very pressing time on the world. But God has promised he will meet all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So we have to make a choice. Am I going to believe what God says? Even though I'm losing my house, losing my car, lost my job. Am I going to believe God and speak his word and be obedient to do the things I need to do in this time? Or am I just going to throw in the towel and forget it all? Oh, you're not going to forget it all. You're not going to throw in the towel. You're watching this program because God has a purpose in your life. I want you to do something before I go on teaching. I want you to get on our website And tell us what you need. Do you need a house? Do you need a car? Do you need a job? Do you need a certain amount of money? Give us the amount. Tell us. Because we're going to pray for you. If you cannot get on the website, then write us a letter. We love to pray over the mail. So we'd just love to hear from you. And today, I want you to make a commitment that you're going to serve God. You're going to have an attitude of faith. And watch what God can do in probably some of the most unusual ways you've ever known. I have a very good friend. I love him dearly. And he shared with me, he is from Iran. He lives in Texas. And he said, when I became a Christian, he said, I was really failing financially. Bad, bad. And he said, I was about to go into bankruptcy. And I thought I had $25 in my bank account. And so he said, I decided I was going to go to McDonald's and have a a, a hamburger. And and then I would go check on my account. So he said, I had that little tiny bit of money. I had a hamburger and checked on my account. And he said, I just become a born again Christian. And they said, oh, you have $2,500 in your account. Not $25, $2,500. He couldn't believe that. He felt that that was a miracle. And that Jesus was saying to him, you know, I'm going to bless you and encourage you. So he became a part of a church. He's a part of a church, very committed, tithing. But he went to a meeting one night and made a commitment to sow in a ministry that was reaching people in the world, a thousand dollar seed, but never paid it. Just kind of let it float out there. And one day God said to him, I would bless you but you don't keep your word. He thought, what do you mean I don't keep my word? I'm a tither. But the Lord said, you promised a seed as an offering to a certain ministry. And he said, oh God, that's right. So he sat down, sowed that seed of $1,000 into that ministry. He said, from that time on, my finances began to multiply. He said, Marilyn, I'm going to tell you the truth. Today, I'm a multimillionaire. And he sows all the time. I mean, he really is reaching lost people. And his business is going bananas. He's in the oil business. And he's in on international soil. But just prospering beyond what you can imagine. So when we look at prosperity, let's look at faith and obedience. And trusting God that he will do what you can never do. And he will move beyond what you can imagine or expect. You lost one house, he could give you 10. Peter loaned one boat, got two boats filled, and got a call into ministry out of it all. Oh. So who, who knows what big thing God is cooking for you? That's why I said, get on the website. Get on the website, leave your need, or write us a letter so we can join our faith with yours and believe it's recession time, but not in the kingdom of God. There's no recession in the kingdom of God. But what there must be is seeking first the kingdom, being obedient to what he tells us to do, sowing, 
tithing and believing God that he will do way beyond what we can imagine or expect. Now, I'm going to go into the Old Testament with this, and I'm going to go to Exodus, the 12th chapter. And I want you to see how God took total poverty into total prosperity, but there's purpose in prosperity. The purpose of prosperity is not to see how many cars you can park in your driveway. I don't think God is disappointed for you to have cars, but that's not the real purpose in God's eyes. The purpose isn't for you to end up with a big, big house. I don't think the house is wrong, but that's not the full purpose of God. He wants to bless you, but the real purpose is more than that. The purpose is to establish his kingdom, his covenant. He says he gives us power to get wealth that we might establish his covenant. All right, let's look at the worst possible <laughs> scenario. The very worst. These people are slaves. They own nothing. They live in Egypt. Their parents were slaves. Their grandparents were slaves. They are very mistreated. They don't own anything. But God has a promise to them that he is going to take them out of Egypt. And God raises up a man named Moses and his brother Aaron with a revelation, a tremendous revelation to bring his people out. Now, I don't know, people tell you how many people were there that they brought out. They'll say two or three million. I don't really know, but I'm going to be conservative and say that there were a million Jewish people there at that time. And Moses comes, and you know the story, with ten plagues, there comes judgment upon every idol that Egypt worships. Every idol. You know, they worship the sun. So God turns the sun off in Egypt and leaves the light on in Goshen. You know, they worship cattle. So their cattle die, get a, a blight, and the, uh, the Israelis, their cattle live. So God brings a judgment to show he is the living God, not the idols that they worship. And God is so economical. He gets so much out of everything. So now it's time after the 10th plague for the Israelites to leave, the Jewish people to leave. So what does he do? Well, in that 10th plague, he gave the Israelites instruction and they did it. You have got to be obedient. And he told them, that they were to sacrifice a lamb on the steps of their house and apply the blood. And that when he saw the blood, the destroyer would pass over them, but all the firstborn of the Egyptians would die. Now they could have said, what? Sacrifice a lamb? We don't have that many ourselves. And you're asking us to do this and we're slaves and we're going to believe you. But they did it. They did it as a whole nation. Over a million people obeyed. Now that night the death angel came and passed over, but the Israelis did not lose their firstborn. Why? Because of the blood. Everybody say the blood. How can I know I can prosper in this day and come through even though it's a squeeze and hard because of the blood of Jesus Christ? And I put my faith in his blood. Now it's time for them to leave, but they're poor. And they have a promised land, but how are they going to get there? I mean, they are slaves. But Egypt says, okay, you can go. We're setting you free. Go, go, go. And that night, they got all together and they left. But before they left, they prospered because the Egyptians gave them their wealth. The Bible says that. It was even prophesied to Abraham in Genesis that this would happen. Dear Lord, over 500 years later, it happens. I believe God's word. So they are loaded with the wealth of Egypt. It said they spoiled the Egyptians. But when they walked out, they walked out healthy. It said even the feeble, the old people, were healthy and walked out strong. They walked out free. They were no longer slaves. And they had purpose. They had some place to go. God had a promised land for them. All of this in the plan of God because of the blood of the lamb, because of the blood of Jesus. And if you don't have Jesus in your heart today, you can repent of your sins, invite him to come into your heart and he will be Lord of your life. Because of the blood of the lamb, 
they left wealthy, healthy, free, and with purpose. Wow. But they get into the wilderness. They have to go through a tremendous wilderness to get to the promised land. And many Christians, because they're going through hard times, say, well, where is God? And they quit reading their Bible, quit praying, quit going to church, quit tithing, quit giving offerings. Folks, that's about as stupid as you can be. That is just stupid, stupid. And they quit obeying. And you don't get better with that because God has a purpose to the wealth. He had a purpose for the wealth that he gave them. And we are going to look at that purpose because God wants you to be wealthy. He wants you to prosper, but he has a purpose in the prosperity that you would establish his covenant, that you would be a blessing in the kingdom and not just, I got a big house, I got two cars. Folks, I'm going to ask you a very personal question. Now, don't get mad at me. Don't you dare get mad at me. Put your hand on your heart. Say, I promise I won't get mad at you. Now, listen to me. When you go to heaven, can you take your house? How about all your cars? How about your clothes? Can you take them? How about the land that you own? How about your stocks? How about your barn, your bonds? How about what you have for your retirement? Can you take it? No. The only thing you can take with you is the people you get saved. The only thing I can take, I live in a nice house. I drive a nice car. They're not going with me to heaven. But the people who get saved, boo, oh, they're going to heaven. And that's where I want my passion to be. And that's really where I want my finances to be. I want my life to be a burning passion to win the loss. Now I'm going to come back and show you what God did with the wealth. You will love it. Stay there. We all need practical life principles for thriving in uncertain financial times. Thankfully, there are life-changing steps from God's Word that we can apply to every situation, guaranteeing success spiritually, financially, physically, and corporately, even in this world of uncertainty. Recession Proof Living by best-selling author of 23 Minutes in Hell, Bill Weiss, shows how to apply God's Word to our everyday lives. Learn how to develop the necessary characteristics for success success through biblical applications and practical advice for succeeding despite difficulties. Not simply a book about how to make money. Recession Proof Living shows you how to live a life that guarantees success God's way. With your gift of $39 or more, we'll send you a copy of this vital resource. We'll also send you Maryland's two CD set, Millionaire Faith, which shows you how to develop a vision for abundance and prosperity. Receive both of these great products for your gift of $39 or more. You need to go to Johannesburg, South Africa with Sarah and me for the most blessed time of your life to minister. It will be so awesome and you can get your brochure today. Is that right? That's right. Call or get on the website for the information. And we have an additional opportunity, yes. Mom, uh, for an excursion to Cape Town to see a safari as well as Robbins Island where Nelson Mandela was. Um, absolutely amazing things that are in Cape Town. That's an additional excursion. But the primary thing we want to encourage you with here is our ministry opportunities in Johannesburg. We're going to be ministering at nighttime as well as a Saving Moses opportunity. This is a life-changing trip and you don't want to miss out. Mom, how can they come? They can come and get the brochure, but you could also scholarship someone to go. And a group of you could get together and scholarship your pastor and totally bless him and change his life. We want to hear from you today. Wealth, prosperity, it's wonderful. Beloved, I want above all things that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. The Israelites leave Egypt with prosperity. They spoil the Egyptians. Now, I don't know if you like to watch history programs. I do. I love history. And I've been to Egypt probably 17, 18 times. And you see the wealth in the museums. The wealth Egypt had is just beyond comprehension. But the Israelites got the first part of it. Who knows what they left with when I see what the leftovers are. It's awesome. But the wealth had a purpose. They didn't just leave dragging all that wealth and saying, oh, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm going to the promised land. I'm wealthy, how much can I buy? Now watch. Watch, 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 watch. 
they get into the wilderness, no food. But God for 40 years supplies their food. No grocery bill, not shabby. God for 40 years takes care of their clothing, even their shoes. Did their shoes grow with their feet? I don't know, it was such a miracle. For 40 years, he supplies their water. For 40 years, he supplies their protection. What if you didn't have a grocery bill for 40 years? What, what if you didn't have a water bill? What if you didn't have a clothing bill? What, what about all that? That's what God gave them. And they really sought first the kingdom when they uh, put the blood of the lamb. But they've got all this wealth. But see, God always has a purpose. It's never just for us. It's covenant to reach the world. It's covenant. God so loves the world, not just you and yours, the world. So they get out into the wilderness, and God's taking good care of them. And he says, I want you to build a tabernacle for me, a church, a place to worship. You don't know how to worship. You've been down in Egypt over 400 years. You don't really know me, and I want you to know me. And I've brought you out of Egypt, but I need to take Egypt out of you, and I need to come into you and be Lord of your life. So he said to them, I want you to bring me a certain amount of gold because he gave Moses the pattern. So the pattern of this beautiful tabernacle or church in the wilderness, it would need gold, it would need silver, it would need brass, it would need linen, it would need jewels. It's a big thing. It has a white linen wall all the way around it. And of course, the Egyptians are famous for linen. And who has it? Well, the, the Israelites have it. Was it just for them? Was it just for them? No, God had a purpose. So they bring up their wealth to build God's church. They sowed it. Everybody say purpose. See, when we get wealth just for us, that's greed. And we get our eyes off the seed and then our need is not met. But they sowed a big part of that wealth. So much so, now listen, listen, they had leftovers. They brought all of this, and Moses said, it's enough. We don't need any more brass. We don't need any more gold. We don't need any more silver. We don't need any more linen. We don't need any more jewels. Keep the rest of it. So they not only sowed it, they had leftovers for their need. And not only had they sown it, but they don't have a grocery bill. They don't have a water bill. Am I right? They don't have a clothing bill. Come on. This is just Bible. Come on. This is Bible. But they put God first. They put the lamb first. They killed the lamb. They put God first. Seek first the kingdom. What are you seeking today? First the kingdom. And then... They had leftovers. So they had that beautiful tabernacle all through the wilderness. They learned to worship God. And I think the best thing of the wilderness is that God came down as a cloud, his presence in the daytime over that tabernacle. And at night, he came as a pillar of fire. They had his presence in the wilderness. We're in a recession time. But folks, if we can have his presence in the day and the night, Honey, we're going to come out of this smelling like a rose. And maybe today you're so pressed. You've lost so much and you're going to lose some more. Get on our website. Let us pray for you. Write us a letter. And hang in there with God. Don't throw God out the window. Well, I'm not going to go to church. I'm mad at God. Folks, you can't afford to be mad at Him. You need Him too much. Well, I can't afford to tithe. You can't afford not to tithe. You need Him too much. He'll bring the miraculous. Some way he can make your shoes grow with your feet. Some way he can provide your food. Some way because his presence was with them. And they followed his presence. Who are you following? Are you following the newscast? If you are, you're going to be very depressed. But his presence, when the pillar of cloud would lift, then they would follow the pillar of cloud. When the pillar of cloud came down... Then they settled there. They followed the presence of God. And now, finally, 
after 40 years, and some of them were very disobedient, and the wilderness is very sad. But finally, they get into the promised land. Well, what are they going to do? They built that tabernacle with their money and their gold. Oh, no, they had leftovers. Everybody say leftovers. You think God is going to leave you <laughs> because you sowed seed? He's not going to meet your need. And they go into the promised land, and it said they got farms they had never built or farmed. They got trees they had never planted. They got cattle, come on, that they'd never raised. God met them on both ends. Oh, the goodness of God leads us to repentance. So I would say to you today, they not only got that in the promised land, but they had the leftovers from Egypt with them. They went in loaded. They went in loaded. And those who wouldn't believe fell in the wilderness, but their children got it. Folks, what do I want my children, my grandchildren to have? I want them to have Jesus. I want them to have the wisdom of Jesus. I want them to live the lifestyle of Jesus. I want the power of Jesus to be in their lives. I don't want them just to be after a career and a house and a car and all those things. They'll be added to them. I want them to have a passion for Jesus. That's the big key. Then all these things will be added to you. You say, it's so hard when all the things are gone for me to keep my eyes on the Lord. It is hard. It is hard. You know, we've been in crunching times. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. Ooh, I've learned how to be content in all circumstances. I just like the abounding times, but I have the abasing time. But I've learned in it that his presence never leaves me. He doesn't forsake me. He'll take me through. He'll cause me to prosper if I keep my eyes on him. So today I want to say to you again, hey, get on our website. Tell us what your need is. We want to pray for you. We really, really do. If you can't get on the website, then folks, sit down. Take the time to write to Sarah and me. We want to pray for you. We believe God has an answer for you. Seek first the kingdom of God, His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. I don't know how He's going to add them. I don't know how He's going to do it. I just know if you will be obedient and believe His word and stay in an attitude of faith, there is nothing he cannot do. And I look at these people in the wilderness who died out there who were disobedient. You know, if I'd have been God, I'd have quit feeding them. I'd have said, no manna for your house today. You're so ugly. But he fed them anyway. I'd have said, no water for you. But he gave them water anyway. Oh, let your shoes wear out. You can go barefoot. I'm disgusted with you. But he even kept them. They didn't get into the promised land, but he even kept them in the wilderness when they were disobedient. How good God is. How good He is. How loving He is and how wonderful that their children got to be blessed and come in. And folks, if we lose our children, our grandchildren, because of our own stupidity, we bring a curse instead of a blessing to our family. So today, this is a very serious moment for us, very serious moment all around the world. Are we going to seek first the kingdom? Are we going to see that prosperity and wealth is to establish the covenant? Or is it for us to have always have a bigger house, more cars, more fur coats? I don't know what you like. And I'm not against any of these things, but I'm for souls, and you are too. God bless you. May he turn this darkness into his light.
We all need practical life principles for thriving in uncertain financial times. Thankfully, there are life-changing steps from God's Word that we can apply to every situation, guaranteeing success spiritually, financially, physically, and corporately, even in this world of uncertainty. Recession-Proof Living by best-selling author of 23 Minutes in Hell, Bill Weiss, shows how to apply God's Word to our everyday lives. Learn how to develop the necessary characteristics for success success through biblical applications and practical advice for succeeding despite difficulties. Not simply a book about how to make money. Recession Proof Living shows you how to live a life that guarantees success God's way. With your gift of $39 or more, we'll send you a copy of this vital resource. We'll also send you Maryland's two CD set, Millionaire Faith, which shows you how to develop a vision for abundance and prosperity. Receive both of these great products for your gift of $39 or more. Did you know that one prayer can change your life forever? You say, one prayer. Yes, one prayer. When I was 16 years old, I prayed one prayer that is still changing my life. I'm in my 70s, and not only is it changing my life daily and has for all these years, but I have eternal life because of that one prayer. Oh, that prayer transforms everything. You say, well, what is the prayer? And I'll tell you what it is. I invited Jesus to come into my heart and be Lord of my life. I repented of my sins. And he came into my heart and he's never left me. And he will never leave you either because the Bible says, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will give you eternal life. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Maybe you've never prayed it. Maybe you've prayed it, but your life is out of sync. Hey, you can pray and recommit your life to him. Pray with me right now. Mean this with your heart. Say, Father, I believe you love me. You have a wonderful plan for my life. I am sorry for my sins and the wrong things I have done. Please forgive me. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus Christ. I have faith in his blood. Jesus, come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? Your life is changed and transformed. You will never be the same. Did you recommit your life? Expect transformation. And above all, know that your name is written in heaven and not in hell.